Hello, this is Adam Caldoun, and if you like the content I'm putting out, please like and subscribe. All right, let's begin. In this video, we're going to discuss what may be considered the first Black Lives Matter uprising in the history of the Americas. In our last video, we talked about how immediately after Christopher Columbus returned from the Americas, the Spanish crown banned Muslims from the New World. The intention behind this was to spread Christianity without any competition. The ban doesn't seem to have worked because in 1503, the governor of Hispaniola officially requested that the Spanish crown again ban African Muslim slaves because they were spreading, quote unquote, bad customs. What were these bad customs? African Muslims would attempt to flee almost immediately and encourage Native Americans to revolt. High slave mortality amongst natives caused a labor shortage. This compelled the governor of Hispaniola to ask for even more Africans. As more and more Africans were imported, the colonists were getting more and more paranoid. Slaves were starting to outnumber them. They used divide-and-conquer tactics to keep Africans and Native Americans from allying. But the natives were dying of disease, running away, and in 1519, some Indians revolted. They couldn't be put down by force and had to be negotiated with. To compensate for this, they imported even more Africans to make up for the dwindling labor of the Indians. Many of these Africans were Wolof Muslims from Senegambia. In Africa, at this time, the Wolof Empire was disintegrating because of the destabilization of the slave trade. This meant war and prisoners of war, which were sold to Europeans. The African slaves brought to Hispaniola included Muslim soldiers and warriors. They had a long history of Islam, but they were forced to convert to Catholicism, eat pork, and drink alcohol. They were also made to watch plays and reenactments of the Reconquista designed to prove the inferiority of Islam and the superiority of Christianity. Also, despite slavery being a part of African culture, the race-based chattel slavery of the Spanish was completely alien to them and considered inhumane and intolerable. Being enslaved in Africa meant that you could keep your religion be well-fed and clothed, as well as potentially being ransomed by your own family. Or, you could also come to an agreement with your owner to earn your own freedom. European slavery, in contrast, was a barbaric death sentence. The Spanish crown did offer incentives like freedom after 15 years of exemplary service. The crown even offered to pay to free the enslaved family of an African man. There is little to suggest that anyone took this seriously. It seems like they were ignorant of the facts on the ground where slaves were being starved and worked to death. For all of the above, the resentment and anger of these experienced warriors exploded in 1522 with the first African slave revolt in the Americas. Twenty Wolof African Muslims planned to flee and meet with another 20 fugitive slaves. They escaped from the sugar mill of Diego Columbus, the son of Christopher Columbus, and over several months attacked Spanish holdings, freeing other slaves, including Native Americans. They made their way to town, hoping to free more slaves and add to the revolt. Meanwhile, the Spanish cavalry was hunting them. When they were finally found, the cavalry charged the rebels, who were able to hold their ground, armed only with stones, makeshift spears, and some stolen weapons. They were no match for the heavily armed Spanish and their horses. Those who weren't killed fled. Most of them were hunted and later hanged, but some survived and lived as fugitives. They became the seed of black resistance and would form palenques, or free towns of fugitive slaves. Despite military expeditions and torture, the Spaniards were never able to contain or suppress these palenques. These fugitive slaves, or maroons as they came to be called, would raid Spanish settlements, freeing fellow Africans to grow their numbers. Spaniards traveling in the countryside were constantly on guard from being ambushed by Maroons. This revolt increased the already growing paranoia of the colonists. Later, when Africans were discovered to be starting trouble, they were hot branded on their foreheads and transported to another colony. This only infuriated the slaves and spread the contagion of revolt as the next major slave rebellions occurred in 1523 in Mexico, 1527 in Puerto Rico, 1529 in Cuba. Meanwhile, the Spanish crown again made official decrees against importing Muslims in 1526 and 1536, but to no avail. 
The Spanish king considered the slave revolts to be a problem with Islam and Muslims, rather than as a result of the mistreatment of Africans. This feels familiar to the modern-day accusations that Muslims are inherently violent, rather than investigating the root causes of Muslim anger. It's simply an example of the oppressor blaming the victim. I think it's worth stepping back and thinking about the courage and ideology of this revolt. No slaves had ever before dared to engage in an offensive against the Spaniards before. The easiest and safest way to resist slavery was simply to run away. Even the Native American revolt that had preceded this one was largely defensive. Instead, these enslaved Africans plotted with fugitive slaves to launch an unprecedented attack. I can't believe that they imagined 40 of them could defeat their masters. We can't know for sure what they were planning, but it seems that freeing other slaves may have been an attempt to grow a slave militia to eventually overthrow their masters. The fact that they held their ground against a cavalry charge may also indicate that they had military experience. It turns out that they miscalculated the allegiances of the Native Americans and the Ladino, or Spanish-speaking Africans. Native Americans had Africans act as their overseers, so they most likely viewed them as oppressors, and many Ladino Africans remained loyal to the Spanish. The slaves they freed did not join them in the fight against the Spanish, and when the Wolof were defeated, they came out of hiding and rejoined their masters. Nevertheless, this revolt marks the beginning of the revolutionary spirit of Africans in the New World, and it highlights the early role of Muslims in resistance and revolt against oppression. My next video will explore Native American and African cooperation in resisting slavery. So if you like these videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for listening.